the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. In episode 117, explore how everyday moments can profoundly impact our lives with Emily Hill. Discover soul care and self-care techniques. Whatever your personal experiences are, I think when you sort of do reach this point where you feel like an all-time low and there's there's pain and there's brokenness and there's, you know, all sorts of other feelings can be floating around at that time too. And and I think when you feel most alone, it's hard to even know where to reach out. It was so hard. I felt so angry. I felt like nothing I knew before made sense. And I think what I learned the most during that time was that the best thing you can do during that time, whether you come from a background of, of understanding who God is or, or thinking that you understand who God is, whether good, bad, or, or anything in between, I think the best thing to do during that time is to start asking some questions and trying to figure out who's around you, what's happening around you. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, a space where stories of strength, resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch, and I'm honoured to guide you on this journey of empowering and healing. Today, we have a very special episode tailored just for you whether you're driving or sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment to yourself. I want you to know that you're in a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope and a reminder that you are not alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share a story that resonates at the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience and unwavering strength that lies within each of us. So settle in, take a deep breath and let the healing begin. Before we dive into today's inspiring narrative, a quick reminder that if you find value in our episodes, consider supporting us by subscribing, sharing and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us reach the hearts and spread the message of healing to so many others. Today, we've got a very special guest, Emily Hill. She's a mum, she's a wife, a social worker and author of a book, and she's a speaker. She helps people from a variety of faith backgrounds discover who, how, how, sorry, how to experience scripture in their everyday lives. I'm excited to dive in. And Emily, can you tell the story? How did you end up where you are? Yeah, so I'm kind of a hodgepodge. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a hybrid um, through social work and ministry. I'm trained as a social worker, licensed as a social worker, and then I obtained a Master of Divinity and worked in professional ministry for over a decade, ranging from children to actually settling into hospice and end of life care for quite a while. And so then I moved into the hospital and now I work as a social worker in a hospital setting and I do things like this, like recording fun podcasts <laughs> on the side as an opportunity to share, you know, the journey that I've been on in life and the guidance that, that I've received on the way as well. Mm, oh, I love it. I love it. So do you have a story of how you came to Christ or were you just born into it? I, I was born into it. Um, my dad is a pastor. So, you know, I kind of grew up from day one, learning about God, being told about him and, and sort of being surrounded in that environment of, of learning and, and kind of growing in my relationship with him. Now, when I stepped out into the real world, um, you know, I was kind of a stereotypical pastor's kid who went to college and, and let loose if I'm being honest. And, <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, if I'm being really honest, I would, I would still attend church on Sunday mornings, but usually like with a hangover from the night before. And, you know, it's not days that I'm proud of, but days that I'm glad I experienced because I had an opportunity to, to kind of pop the bubble of, of faith that I grew up in and experience the real world and, and learn how to make choices for myself, learn how to figure out what, where my moral compass would guide me and, and kind of what was important to me along the way, both in, in my life, but in my faith too. And so, you know, I did really come to, to meet God on my own as an adult. Um, after going through those college years, you know, I, I kind of settled in and got married and had babies and, and I thought I had it all figured out, right. I was working in ministry and, and I thought everything was, was good. And then I, I hit my own sort of rock bottom with, with a miscarriage and that led to marriage struggles that led to, you know, kind of just feeling alone and broken and kind of not really sure where God was in all of it. And I think it really took though that rock bottom experience for me to actually truly understand exactly who he is and, you know, how he was showing up in my life all along. Sometimes I just was too sad or angry or lonely or worried to really recognize him. Mm. There's so much in what you said. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. So, so in the in the thick of it all, uh, as a survivor myself, uh, I, I can understand how for other people, perhaps maybe God is the furthest thing from their mind in the moment mm -hmm. of all of the activity that's happening because it is a very lonely place. And mm -hmm. unless you are a person of faith, it's not automatically where your mind goes. So right, yeah. So what uh, what could what what information could you share today? Not necessarily scripture, but what could you share mm -hmm. today that could assist our listeners for them to have a greater understanding that they're not alone? Because that's one of the biggest challenges is that sensation of feeling isolated as a survivor and feeling alone. And it doesn't matter who you turn to. You know, it, it, you're just not getting the outcome that you need, which is that feeling of safety and security. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, whatever your personal experiences are, I think when you sort of do reach this point where you feel like an all time low and there's there's pain and there's brokenness and there's, you know, all sorts of other feelings can be floating around at that time, too. And and I think when you feel most alone, it's hard to even know where to reach out. I know for me, like I grew up as a person of faith. So reaching for God should have been easy, or at least that's what I thought, but it was so hard. I felt so angry. I felt like nothing I knew before made sense. And I think what I learned the most during that time was that the best thing you can do during that time, whether you come from a background of of understanding who God is or, or thinking that you understand who God is, whether good, bad, or, or anything in between. I think the best thing to do during that time is to start asking some questions and trying to figure out who's around you, what's happening around you, and whether they're questions about God, whether they're questions about faith or about humanity or about your own emotions and experiences. I think oftentimes you know, we, we want to come up with the solutions, but I think sometimes being willing to just start asking some questions, whether it be in your own mind, in your own heart, um, for me, it was through prayer, or if it's finding people who are safe, I'm a big believer in, in Jesus and a therapist. <laughs> so, you know, finding a professional who you can feel comfortable enough to talk to and just ask, ask questions and not be afraid of, of judgment or, you know, fear of, of people wondering like, oh my gosh, why in the world would you ask that? I think that was the most important way that I started to not feel so alone was feeling the freedom to just kind of ask the questions of things that I was wondering about. Mm, yeah. So Christ curious, let's call it. I love mm -hmm. it. Okay. So there's a lot in there as well. Wow. So, you know, where do they begin the journey? If um, if they're in a situation that's not safe, they, mm -hmm. yes, they need a therapist and, yes, they need the bigger vision of faith. But uh, at, at the very first thing is to have that level of safety. 
and um mm-hmm. so you know a lot of it because of the financial control like you've got that level as well as not feeling safe so it's like your immediate and what's happening for you in the immediate vicinity is one thing but then also your future safety is at risk as well uh, in leaving it's it's a complicated challenge and uh, i love the podcast for having the beautiful conversations about how people can move forward so if someone is christ curious uh what would you suggest <laughs> what would you suggest <laughs> they um you know if they're just a, a vip a vaguely interested person what yeah. would you suggest would be the very first thing someone could do to uh, to take a step um, towards faith? I think the first thing to do would be find a safe space to like dip your toe in the water, right? Which I know that like showing up to a church on Sunday morning probably isn't the safest space for a lot of people to enter, right? Especially if, if, you know, there are things going on at home or in your life or, or maybe things from your past that you feel like wouldn't fit with what you've always understood church to be or, or who God is, you know, it, it can't feel safe all the time to step into a church and, and be facing people of faith. But so the internet, is a great place to start dipping your toe into the water. You know, you can find a lot of resources, whether it's videos or, you know, online eBooks and things like that. And so I would say just start getting curious and looking around and seeing what fits, what feels right, what starts making sense to you. Because I think you'll find that when you discover people who are talking about the person of God and people who can relate to you. You know, there's a lot of people out there who have, who have gone through the same things and are willing to share those and then also share their journeys of, of restoration and recovery. And so I think if you're, you know, just starting to wonder, I think the internet is a beautiful place to start, start figuring it out from like the safety of your own home or a corner of the library or, you know, sitting in your car on your lunch break. I love it. So all of this is true. And, uh, and you know, churches do have lots of different outreach groups. So they've got morning coffee for mums. They've got men's mm-hmm. groups. They've got, they've got uh, meet and eats. They've got lots of different mm-hmm. outreach things that they do that can give you an opportunity to experience the, the ministry, experience mm-hmm. people that really um uh, holding the space for people to be that Christ curious. So, yeah, right. there's lots of little uh, ministries to pop into. In, in Most churches do outreach. It's sort mm-hmm. of the reason why they're a church. So right, right. wherever you are on this planet. And they can offer tangible resources too, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like show up and get a good meal and, you know, maybe find out something along the way. And I think that's, you know, really an incredible way to take care of yourself in the moment, but also learn a little bit about, about what they're wanting to share with you. Yeah. I love this. I love this for those who are VIPs and Christ. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I think we've started a trend. We'll do a hashtag. Now. Right. I love those. <laughs> I love those. Are you copywriting those? Cause I'm <laughs> are you Christ curious. I love it. I love it. Uh, so I'd love to know a little bit more about your book. You know, how does a woman of faith who sort of, you know, took a step back to now really taken a huge plunge in and now yeah. make that your profession and yeah. also the social work and everything else that you bring together? How, how what's the story of the book? Where did that come across? Sure. And, and what's the context of the book? Yeah. So, you know, I spent a lot of time in hospice care. So that's really having the privilege to sit with people at the end of life, whether it be their final moments or days or, or months even. And, and during that time, I really did consider it such a blessing to be with people as they were looking back on their lives and sharing this, this special perspective of everything that they had experienced. And, and, you know, people would talk about the traumas and talk about the difficult times, but they would talk about the, the highlighted moments of, of achievement, but also, you know, spending time on the beach with their kids or, or chasing their dogs through the park. And, and some of these silly little moments too, that, that I didn't realize at the end of life, I would be looking back and, and considering as, as maybe some of the bigger moments and then moving into the hospital setting that I work in now, 
I'm sort of surrounded by by crisis more than than these sweet moments of of reflection. And and oftentimes when I'm sitting at bedside with someone, it's it's with this heightened sense of the future and and what's going to come, what's going to be a result of what I'm experiencing today. And and from being in both of those spaces that are that are pretty different, but but also have a lot of similar shared human experience. What I realized was that the everyday moments of life matter so much, right? The, the momentous are, are great. You know, those, those big shiny highlighted moments are, are wonderful, but often it's those everyday moments that really have, I think the biggest long-term impacts, you know, and, and in good ways and in not so good ways. And so as I was sitting in those spaces with people and then going through my own period of, of grief and a little bit of self-destruction, honestly, as I, as I stumbled through it and I, you know, had this, this strain in my relationship at home as we battled, you know, addiction in our home and things like that. It, it just became so obvious that the everyday moments is what mattered. And I was, I was missing that. And so I sort of went on this little, little journey, not really planned. It wasn't like I plugged it into my GPS. It was more like back in the day where you would like print out map quest instructions. But then as soon as you made one wrong turn, you were like off in never, never land. And <laughs> but it was this journey of really discovering light in, in a dark and broken world. Cause from my perspective, my, my faith background, you know, I, I believe in, in God, who's savior of the world, but I also believe that we live in a broken world and, and that there is a lot of depth to that, that we experience every day. But so in the journey of that, some, some private journal entries turned into this devotional study book where I share with you, you know, personal anecdotes. I share with you some of my deepest, darkest fears and insecurities and worries and struggles and, in the midst of that, though, I show you where I noticed God showing up for me. And so my hope is that in reading it, that while your experiences, while your perspectives, while your faith is probably different than mine, that you would be able to apply some of the same principles or maybe even just allow it to be a space where you can be your own authentic self and be okay with facing your own insecurities and fears and worries and and encounter you know, the higher power or the light that can help guide you through that darkness. Oh, that's so powerful. And so it's multi-denominational or all denominational, mm -hmm. yes? Yeah. Oh. Yep, absolutely. So uh, is it a good place to start if you're Christ curious? Yes, I think it's the perfect place to start. My my hope is that if you have been reading the Bible since day one, that it will give you some new understandings, maybe some some little light bulb moments. But I also think it's approachable enough that, you know, I've had friends pick it up that aren't aren't Bible readers, aren't church attenders, and they've loved the chance just to be curious and to flip through it and read some maybe silly stories, some sad moments, but be able to connect and and kind of expand their thinking, whether they agree or disagree with what they're reading on the page. So I definitely think it's perfect for the curious. Oh, I love that. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, which is obviously I'm looking for your personal interpretation. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll share my personal interpretation first. So when I very first read the Bible for the first time, I started at the beginning of the book. I don't think <laughs> that's where we should start. <laughs> if you're just sitting on the fence and being Christ curious because there's some scary stuff in the Old Testament. <laughs> so, so where would you suggest for those listeners today that are Christ curious, where would you start to read the Bible? <laughs> yeah, definitely don't start in the beginning <laughs> the, or at the end. Those are both terrible <laughs> terrible places to start. Um, I personally think if you're going to land in the Old Testament to start, so the first kind of chunk of the Bible, I think one of the best books to start in is Jonah. It's super short. It's like reading a bedtime story. Um, but it's also a great example of how like you don't have to have it all together for God to speak into your life. Like Jonah is kind of one of the worst examples of a prophet of God. And yet he gets this little book and teaches us a big lesson about 
following God and, you know, kind of going off of the, (laughs) off of the way that we're guided to, but then how God ultimately, you know, brings us back to him. I think it's a cool place to start. If you're in the Bible, I would also recommend hopping to the second half of the Bible, the new Testament, um, and starting in the book of John, it's one of the gospels. He talks a lot about the love of Jesus. He talks a lot about how Jesus interacted with the people around him. And I think it takes away some of the, um, some of the, the misunderstandings about God in our, in our everyday lives. And so I love the gospel of John. So I would say Jonah and John would be my two starting points. The two, James. I love it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love this. So you've got a place to, to to tip your toe in the water and have a look. Yeah. And uh, and you think about those outreach ministries for different churches uh, when you're looking for to shift your proximity because if you're in a situation that isn't amazing, it's the proximity is one of the things that you need to shift. You need to be surrounded by people that aren't going to judge you, that are going to, you know, hold you and hold your safety. And, uh, and, and also just from a perspective, of just not gossiping, like a safe place to have a conversation where people aren't going to repeat the things that you're talking about. So, but Mm -hmm. I do love what you started off with, that you're going to need a therapist and Christ. (laughs) (laughs) So you're going to need both. Uh, So I love that. I love that. Um, hmm, Could that be one and the same? No, I don't think so. But that's okay. okay. I think, yeah, (laughs) I think two separate people is good. (laughs) You're a close mix, a social worker and also a minister. I love that. Should all ministers study social working? I would say yes, they should. But (laughs) Wow. And should all social workers study the Bible? I don't know. We could have a thing here. (laughs) Let's do some further investigation. Yeah. If you're listening today and you're enjoying this beautiful conversation, welcome to the podcast of Healing Through Love. We have beautiful conversations with wellness practitioners and people that hold their own frequency for helping people heal and move forward in life. It's a beautiful place for lovely conversations. If you're a practitioner yourself, we have pamper days. So think day spas on steroids and they are scattered all over this beautiful globe where we hold these pamper days just one day for our survivors to come along and experience all sorts of therapies for free. It's an opportunity for us to pay it forward and hold that frequency for healing and give them hope that there is more, that there are people, complete strangers that care. These women are not necessarily women of faith. They are women who share the same story of family and domestic violence, and they want to make a difference and pay it forward for others to see the light. So if you are curious and you're a practitioner, please reach out to Healing Through Love. And if you're a survivor listening listening to us today, reach out to Healing Through Love. We've got Pamper Days happening all year round in different locations around the world, and we'd love to share those details with you so that you can come along and be our guest. I'm having such a great conversation. (laughs) I don't want it to end, but I I would like to know, Now, with your book and now moving forward, what would be your words of wisdom to our listeners today? I think my words of wisdom would be that regardless of what your moment looks like today, you are not alone. I can promise you that. I understand that it might feel like you're alone at moments. I have felt those moments of of deep darkness. And I think that a lot of people listening probably have. And so my encouragement for you would just be to step into whatever sliver of light you can find, even if it just looks like the tiny light that comes when a, when a door is cracked open, I just encourage you to go toward that light, whether it is the presence of a person, whether it is the doorway to a church event, whether it is uh, a higher power, whether it is God speaking to you in a moment in the depths of your of your sorrow or your darkness, I just encourage you to step toward that light because there is there is a sliver there somewhere for you. Oh, I love that. I love that. It's so there's so much in that as well. <laughs> I love this, and I'm looking forward to reading your book. Uh, it sounds like it's more of a journal rather than just a read. So more of an activity. You read a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely meant to get 
interactive. So a lot of times, if you've spent time in the church world, we love our devotionals, right? Where they tell you to read this passage every day or every week and things like that. But um, I found when I dig into those devotionals, usually by day three, I've already fallen behind. So this one is meant to be, (laughs) this is meant to be something that you just pick up when you can, when you want to, whether you're like sipping a glass of wine or, you know, snuggled up with a a bowl of ice cream or you're enjoying like your back porch and you just want to pick it up, read through a few pages, read through the whole thing, but it does give you opportunities to really pause, to dig in, to consider your own life, to consider, you know, who might be kind of guiding you along in life as well. Mm -hmm. And and open the opportunity for conversations because it's yep, the absolutely that really make mm-hmm. the difference because we just you know when we're inside our own heads with all of these challenges we don't really have that opportunity to have uh, to see that others have had a similar journey and just by simply having the conversations gives us that opportunity to see that we're not alone and mm-hmm. uh, gets us to explore our own thoughts and feelings as well. Right. I I read a study once where psychologists had all got together and somehow determined that 90% of our thoughts are in the realm of I'm helpless, I'm worthless, and I'm unlovable. And so I do think when we stay in our own minds and, you know, kind of in our own, in our own thought worlds, we can get caught in that. And it's hard to see the other 10% of our thoughts. And, and so when we allow a book or a person or, you know, anyone to speak into our lives and sort of counter some of those thoughts that are so far from the truth. I think it can have an incredible impact on how then we face what we're encountering in our, in our lives outside of our, our thought worlds. Yes. So true. And, uh, and in that the conversations can be the slither of light. They Mm -hmm. can be opening for us to have that level of curiosity and move forward and, and realize that we're not alone and that we're all all humans having a human experience here mm-hmm. on the planet at the same time and uh, and that there is hope. I love it. Beautiful conversation, Emily. Beautiful conversation, Emily. And I'm looking forward to more. Uh, we'd love to have you come back later on in the year and have a conversation close to Christmas. That would be amazing. Yeah. And uh, and because this is Christmas can be the lightest and the darkest time for survivors. Mm. And uh, and we need to have that even more la- layer of hope. And also it's Christmas. There's things to talk about. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for being our special guest today. That's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Emily. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast.